love by charles francis richardson from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by sonia as the narrator and lian yao as the lord love if suddenly upon the street my gracious saviour i should meet and he should say as i love thee what love hast thou to offer me then what could this poor heart of mine dare offer to that heart divine his eye would pierce my outward show his thought my inmost thought would know and if i said i love thee lord he would not heed my spoken word because my daily life would tell if verily i loved him well if on the day or in the place wherein he met me face to face my life could show some kindness done some purpose formed some work begun for his dear sake then it were meet love's gift to lay at jesus feet end of poem this recording is in the public domain sunday morning bells by dinah m mullock craig from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by craig franklin sunday morning bells from the near city comes the clang of bells their hundred jarring diverse tones combine in one faint misty harmony as fine as the soft note yon winter robin swells what if to thee in thine infinity these multiform and many-coloured creeds seem but the robe man wraps as masker as weeds round the one living truth them givest him thee what if these varied forms that worship prove being heart worship reach thy perfect ear but as a monotone complete and clear of which the music is through christ's name love forever rising in sublime increase to glory in the highest on earth peace end of poem this recording is in the public domain sabbath hymn on the mountains by john stuart blackie from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter sabbath hymn on the mountains praise ye the lord not in the temple of shapeliest mould polished with marble and gleaming with gold piled upon pillars of slenderest grace but here in the blue sky's luminous face praise ye the lord praise ye the lord not where the organ's melodious wave dies neath the rafters that narrow the nave but here with the free wind's wandering sweep here with the billow that booms from the deep praise ye the lord praise ye the lord not with a pale-faced multitude meet in the sweltering lane and the dun-visaged street but here where bright ocean thick sown with green isles feeds the glad eye with a harvest of smiles praise ye the lord praise ye the lord here where the strength of the old granite ben towers o'er the green swarded grace of the glen where the birch flings its fragrance abroad on the hill and the bee of the heather bloom wanders at will praise ye the lord praise ye the lord here where the loch the dark mountain's fair daughter down the red scour flings the white streaming water leaping and tossing and swirling forever down to the bed of the smooth rolling river praise ye the lord praise ye the lord not where the voice of a preacher instructs you not where the hand of a mortal conducts you but where the bright welkin in scripture of glory blazons creation's miraculous story praise ye the lord praise ye the lord the wind and the welkin 
the sun and the river weaving a tissue of wonders forever the mead and the mountain the flower and the tree what is their pomp but a vision of thee wonderful lord praise ye the lord not in the square-hewn many-tiered pile not in the long-drawn dim-shadowed aisle but where the bright world with age never hoary flashes her brightness and thunders his glory praise ye the lord end of poem this recording is in the public domain the sabbath morning by john Leyden, from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter the sabbath morning with silent awe i hail the sacred morn that slowly wakes while all the fields are still a soothing calm on every breeze is born a graver murmur gurgles from the rill and echo answers softer from the hill and sweeter sings the linnet from the thorn the skylark warbles in a tone less shrill hail light serene hail sacred sabbath morn the rooks float silent by an airy drove the sun a placid yellow luster throws the gales that lately sighed along the grove have hushed their downy wings in dead repose the hovering rack of clouds forgets to move so smiled that day when the first morn arose end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Poor Man's Day from The Sabbath by James Graham From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia The Poor Man's Day from The Sabbath How still the morning of the hallowed day! Mute is the voice of rural labour, Hushed the ploughboy's whistle and the milkmaid's song the scythe lies glittering in the dewy wreath of tedded grass mingled with faded flowers that yestermorn bloomed waving in the breeze sounds the most faint attract the ear the hum of early bee the trickling of the dew the distant bleating midway up the hill calmness sits throned on yon unmoving cloud to him who wanders over the upland lees the blackbird's note comes mellower from the dale and sweeter from the sky the gladsome lark warbles his heaven-tuned song the lulling brook murmurs more gently down the deep-worn glen while from yon lowly roof whose circling smoke overmounts the mist is heard at intervals the voice of psalms the simple song of praise with dove-like wings peace over yon village broods the dizzying mill-wheel rests the anvil's din has ceased all all around is quietness less fearful on this day the limping hare stops and looks back and stops and looks on man her deadliest foe the toil-worn horse set free unheedful of the pasture roams at large and as his stiff unwieldy bulk he rolls his iron-armed hoofs gleam in the morning ray but chiefly man the day of rest enjoys hail sabbath thee i hail the poor man's day on other days the man of toil is doomed to eat his joyless bread lonely the ground both seat and board screened from the winter's cold and summer's heat by neighbouring hedge or tree but on this day embosomed in his home he shares the frugal meal with those he loves with those he loves he shares the heartfelt joy of giving thanks to god not thanks of form a word and a grimace but reverently with covered face and upward earnest eye hail sabbath thee i hail the poor man's day 
the pale mechanic now has leave to breathe the morning air pure from the city's smoke while wandering slowly up the river side he meditates on him whose power he marks in each green tree that proudly spreads the bough as in the tiny dew-bent flowers that bloom around its roots and while he thus surveys with elevated joy each rural charm he hopes yet fears presumption in the hope that heaven may be one sabbath without end end of poem this recording is in the public domain the sabbath of the soul by anna letitia barbauld from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for LibriVox.org by craig franklin the sabbath of the soul sleep sleep to-day tormenting cares of earth and folly born ye shall not dim the light that streams from this celestial morn to-morrow will be time enough to feel your harsh control ye shall not violate this day the sabbath of my soul sleep sleep for ever guilty thoughts let fires of vengeance die and purge from sin may i behold a god of purity end of poem this recording is in the public domain Vesper Hymn by Samuel Longfellow From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Yao Vesper Hymn Now on sea and land descending, Bring the night its peace profound. Let our Vesper Hymn be blending With the holy calm around. Soon as dies the sunset glory, stars of heaven shine out above telling still the ancient story their creator's changeless love now our wants and burdens leaving to his care who cares for all cease we fearing cease we grieving at his touch our burdens fall as the darkness deepens o'er us lo eternal stars arise hope and faith and love rise glorious shining in the spirit skies end of home this recording is in the public domain vesper hymn by eliza scudder from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by lian yao vesper hymn the day is done the weary day of thought and toil is past soft falls the twilight cool and grey on the tired earth at last by wisest teachers wearied by gentlest friends oppressed in thee alone the soul outworn refreshment finds and rest bend gracious spirit from above like these o'erarching skies and to thy firmament of love lift up these longing eyes and folded by thy sheltering hand in refuge still and deep let blessed thoughts from thee descend as drop the dews of sleep and when refreshed the soul once more puts on new life and power o oh, let thine image lord alone gild the first waking hour let that dear presence dawn and glow fairer than morn's first ray and thy pure radiance overflow the splendour of the day so in the hastening even so in the coming morn when deeper slumber shall be given and fresher life be born shine out true light to guide my way amid that deepening gloom and rise o morning star the first that day spring to illume i cannot dread the darkness where thou wilt watch o'er me nor smile to greet the sunrise unless thy smile i see creator saviour comforter on thee my soul is cast at morn at night in earth in heaven be thou my first and last 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Amazing Beauteous Change by Philip Doddridge From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin Amazing Beauteous Change Amazing Beauteous Change A world created new My thoughts with transport range The lovely scene to view in all i trace saviour divine the word is thine be thine the praise see crystal fountains play amidst the burning sands the river's winding way shines through the thirsty lands new grass is seen and o'er the meads its carpet spreads of living green where pointed brambles grew entwined with horrid thorn gay flowers forever new the painted fields adorn the blushing rose and lily there in union fair their sweets disclose where the bleak mountain stood all bare and disarrayed see the wide branching wood diffuse its grateful shade tall cedars nod and oaks and pines and elms and vines confess thee god the tyrants of the plain their savage chase give o'er no more they rend the slain and thirst for blood no more but infant hands fierce tigers stroke and lions yoke in flowery bands o oh, when almighty lord shall these glad things arise to verify thy word and bless our wandering eyes that earth may raise with all its tongues united songs of ardent praise end of poem this recording is in the public domain the word by william walsham howe from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by lian yao the word o word of god incarnate o wisdom from on high o truth unchanged unchanging o light of our dark sky we praise thee for the radiance that from the hallowed page a lantern to our footsteps shines on from age to age the church from thee her master received the gift divine and still that light she lifteth o'er all the earth to shine it is the golden casket where gems of truth are stored it is the heaven-drawn picture of thee the living word it floateth like a banner before god's host unfurled it shineth like a beacon above the darkling world it is the chart and compass that o'er life's surging sea mid mists and rocks and quicksands still guide o christ to thee o make thy church dear saviour a lamp of burnished gold to bear before the nations thy true light as of old o oh, teach thy wandering pilgrims by this their path to trace till clouds and darkness ended they see thee face to face end of poem this recording is in the public domain the chimes of england by arthur cleveland cox from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter The Chimes of England The chimes, the chimes of motherland, Of England green and old, That out from fame and ivy tower A thousand years have told. How glorious must their music be As breaks the hallowed day, And calleth with a seraph's voice a nation up to pray those chimes that tell a thousand tales sweet tales of olden time and ring a thousand memories at vesper and at prime at bridal and at burial for cottager and king those chimes 
those glorious christian chimes how blessedly they ring those chimes those chimes of motherland upon a christmas morn outbreaking as the angels did for a redeemer born how merrily they call afar to cot and baron's hall with holly decked and mistletoe to keep the festival the chimes of england how they peal from tower and gothic pile where hymn and swelling anthem fill the dim cathedral aisle where windows bathe the holy light on priestly heads that falls and stains the florid tracery of banner dighted walls and then those easter bells in spring those glorious easter chimes how loyally they hail thee around old queen of holy times from hill to hill like sentinels responsively they cry and sing the rising of the lord from vale to mountain high i love ye chimes of motherland with all this soul of mine and bless the lord that i am sprung of good old english line and like a son i sing the lay that england's glory tells for she is lovely to the lord for you ye christian bells and heir of her historic fame though far away my birth thee too i love my forest land the joy of all the earth for thine thy mother's voice shall be and here where god is king with english chimes from christian spires the wilderness shall ring end of poem this recording is in the public domain the old village choir by benjamin f taylor from the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org, by Thomas Peter as the narrator, and Lian Yao as the minister. The Old Village Choir I have fancied sometimes the Bethel-bent beam that trembled to earth in the patriarch's dream was a ladder of song in that wilderness rest from the pillar of stone to the blue of the blest and the angels descending to dwell with us here old hundred and corinth and china and mere let us sing to god's praise the minister said all the psalm books at once fluttered open at york sun their long dotted wings in the words that he read while the leader leaped into the tune just ahead and politely picked up the keynote with a fork and the vicious old viol went growling along at the heels of the girls in the rear of the song all the hearts are not dead not under the sod that those breaths can blow open to heaven and god ah silver street flows by a bright shining road oh not to the hymns that in harmony flowed but the sweet human psalms of the old-fashioned choir to the girl that sang alto the girl that sang air oh i need not a wing bid no genii come with a wonderful web from arabian loom to bear me again up the river of time when the world was in rhythm and life was its rhyme where the streams of the years flowed so noiseless and narrow that across it there floated the song of the sparrow for a sprig of green caraway carries me there to the old village church and the old village choir where clear of the floor my feet slowly swung and timed the sweet pulse of the praise that they sung till the glory aslant from the afternoon sun seemed the rafters of gold in god's temple begun you may smile at the nasals of old deacon brown who followed by scent till he ran the tune down and dear sister green with more goodness than grace 
rose and fell on the tombs as she stood in her place and where coronation exultingly flows tried to reach the high notes on the tips of her toes to the land of the leal they have gone with their song where the choir and the chorus together belong oh be lifted ye gates let me hear them again blessed song blessed singers forever amen end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Lancashire Doxology by Dinah M. Mullock Craig From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin A Lancashire Doxology Some cotton has lately been imported into Farringdon, where the mills have been closed for a considerable time. The people who were previously in the deepest distress went out to meet the cotton. The women wept over the bales and kissed them, and finally sang the doxology over them. Spectator of May the 14th, 1803 Praise God from whom all blessings flow, Praise him who sendeth joy and woe, The Lord who takes, the Lord who gives, Oh, praise him all that dies and lives. He opens and he shuts his hand, but why we cannot understand, pours and dries up his mercy's flood, and yet is still all perfect good. We fathom not the mighty plan, the mystery of God and man. We women, when afflictions come, we only suffer and are dumb. And when the tempest passing by, he gleams out sunlight through our sky, we look up and through black clouds riven we recognize the smile of heaven ours is no wisdom of the wise we have no deep philosophies childlike we take both kiss and rod for he who loveth knoweth god end of poem this recording is in the public domain Rebecca's Hymn from Ivanhoe by Sir Walter Scott From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia as Rebecca And Lian Yao as the Lord Rebecca's Hymn from Ivanhoe When Israel, of the Lord beloved, out from the land of bondage came, Her father's God before her moved an awful guide in smoke and flame by day along the astonished lands the cloudy pillar glided slow by night arabia's crimson sands returned the fiery column's glow there rose the choral hymn of praise and trump and timbrel answered keen and zion's daughters poured their lays with priests and warriors voice between no portents now our foes amaze forsaken israel wanders lone our fathers would not know thy ways and thou hast left them to their own but present still though now unseen when brightly shines the prosperous day be thoughts of thee a cloudy screen to temper the deceitful ray and o oh, when stoops on judah's path in shade and storm the frequent night be thou long-suffering slow to wrath and burning and the shining light our harps we left by babel's streams the tyrant's jest the gentile's scorn no censer round our altar beams and mute a timbrel harp and horn but thou hast said the blood of goat the flesh of rams i will not prize a contrite heart a humble thought are mine accepted sacrifice end of poem this recording is in the public domain the book of god by horatius bonar from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Yao. 
the Book of God. Thy thoughts are here, my God, expressed in words divine, the utterance of heavenly lips in every sacred line. Across the ages they have reached us from afar, than the bright gold more golden they, purer than purer star. More durable they stand than the eternal hills, far sweeter and more musical than music of earth's rills. Fairer in their fair hues than the fresh flowers of earth, more fragrant than the fragrant climes where odours have their birth. Each word of thine a gem from the celestial mines, a sunbeam from that holy heaven where holy sunlight shines. Thine, thine, this book, though given in man's poor human speech, telling of things unseen, unheard, beyond all human reach. No strength it craves or needs from this world's wisdom vain, no filling up from human wells or sublunary rain. No light from sons of time, nor brilliance from its gold. It sparkles with its own glad light, as in the ages old. A thousand hammers keen, with fiery force and strain, brought down on it in rage and hate, have struck this gem in vain. Against the sea-swept rock, ten thousand storms their will, a foam and rage have wildly spent, it lifts its calm face still. It standeth, and will stand, without or change or age, the word of majesty and light, the church's heritage. End of home. This recording is in the public domain. The Meeting by John Greenleaf Whittier From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin as the narrator Thomas Peter as the guest Sonia as the worshippers And Lian Yao as the lord The Meeting the elder folk shook hands at last down seat by seat the signal passed to simple ways like ours unused half solemnized and half amused with long drawn breath and shrug my guest his sense of glad relief expressed outside their hills lay warm in sun the cattle in the meadow run stood half leg deep a single bird the green repose above us stirred what part or lot have you, he said, in these dull rites of drowsy head? Is silence worship? Seek it where it soothes with dreams the summer air, not in this close and rude benched hall, but where soft lights and shadows fall, and all the slow sleep-walking hours glide soundless over grass and flowers. From time and place and form apart, its holy ground the human heart nor ritual bound nor temple word walks the free spirit of the lord our common master did not pen his followers up from other men his service liberty indeed he built no church he framed no creed but while the saintly pharisee made broader his phylactery as from the synagogue was seen the dusty sandaled nazarene through ripening cornfields lead the way upon the awful sabbath day his sermons were the healthful talk that shorter made the mountain walk his wayside texts were flowers and birds where mingled with his gracious words the rustle of the tamarisk tree and ripple wash of galilee thy words are well o friend i said unmeasured and unlimited with noiseless slide of stone to stone the mystic church of god has grown invisible and silent stands the temple never made with hands and heard the voices still and small of its unseen confessional he needs no special place of prayer whose hearing ear is everywhere he brings not back the childish days that ring the earth with stones of praise roofed karnak's hall of gods and laid the plinths of philia's colonnade still less he owns the selfish good and sickly growth of solitude the worthless grace that out of sight 
flowers in the desert anchorite dissevered from the suffering whole love hath no power to save a soul not out of self the origin a native air and soil of sin the living waters spring and flow the trees with leaves of healing grow dream not o friend because i seek this quiet shelter twice a week i better deem its pine-laid floor than breezy hill or sea sung shore but nature is not solitude she crowds us with her thronging wood her many hands reach out to us her many tongues are garrulous perpetual riddles of surprise she offers to our ears and eyes she will not leave our senses still but drags them captive at her will and making earth too great for heaven she hides the giver in the given and so i find it well to come for deeper rest to this still room for here the habit of the soul feels less the outer world's control the strength of mutual purpose pleads more earnestly our common needs and from the silence multiplied by these still forms on either side the world the time and sense have known falls off and leaves us god alone yet rarely through the charmed repose unmix the stream of motive flows a flavour of its many springs the tints of earth and sky it brings in the still waters needs must be some shade of human sympathy and here in its accustomed place i look on memory's dearest face the blind bysitter guesseth not what shadow haunts that vacant spot no eyes save mine alone can see the love wherewith it welcomes me and still with those alone my kin in doubt and weakness want and sin i bow my head my heart i bear as when the face was living there and strive too oft alas in vain the peace of simple trust to gain fold fancy's restless wings and lay the idols of my heart away welcome the silence all unbroken nor less the words of fitness spoken such golden words as hers for whom our autumn flowers have just made room whose hopeful utterance through and through the freshness of the morning blew who loved not less the earth that light fell on it from the heavens in sight but saw in all fair forms more fair the eternal beauty mirrored there whose eighty years but added grace and saintlier meaning to her face the look of one who bore away glad tidings from the hills of day while all our hearts went forth to meet the coming of her beautiful feet or haply hers whose pilgrim tread is in the path where jesus led who dreams her childhood's sabbath dream by jordan's willow-shaded stream and of the hymns of hope and faith sang by the monks of nazareth hears pious echoes in the call to prayer from muslim minarets fall repeating where his works were wrought the lesson that her master taught of whom an elder sibyl gave the prophecies of kumai's cave i ask no organ soulless breath to drone the themes of life and death no altar candle lit by day no ornate wordsman's rhetoric play no cool philosophy to teach its bland audacities of speech to double tasked idolaters themselves they god and worshippers no pulpit hammered by the fist of loud asserting dogmatist who borrows from the hand of love the smoking thunderbolts of jove i know how well the fathers taught what work the later schoolmen wrought i reverence old-time faith and men but god is near us now as then his force of love is still unspent his hate of sin as imminent and still the measure of our needs outgrows the cramping bounds of creeds the manna gathered yesterday already savours of decay doubts to the world's child heart unknown question us now from star and stone too little or too much we know the sight is swift and faith is slow the power is lost to self-deceive 
with shallow forms of make-believe we walk at high noon and the bells call to a thousand oracles but the sound deafens and the light is stronger than our dazzled sight the letters of the sacred book glimmer and swim beneath our look still struggles in the age's breast with deepening agony of quest the old entreaty art thou he or look we for the christ to be god should be most where man is least so where is neither church nor priest and never rag of form or creed to clothe the nakedness of need where farmer folk in silence meet i turn my bell and summoned feet i lay the critic's glass aside i tread upon my lettered pride and lowest seated testify to the oneness of humanity confess the universal want and share whatever heaven may grant he findeth not who seeks his own the soul is lost that saved alone not on one favoured forehead fell of old the fire-tongued miracle but flamed o'er all the thronging host the baptism of the holy ghost heart answers heart in one desire the blending lines of prayer aspire where in my name meet two or three our lord hath said i there will be so sometimes come to soul and sense the feeling which is evidence that very near about us lies the realm of spiritual mysteries the sphere of the supernal powers impinges on this world of ours the low and dark horizon lifts to light the scenic terror shifts the breath of a diviner air blows down the answer of a prayer that all our sorrow pain and doubt a great compassion clasps about and law and goodness love and force are wedded fast beyond divorce then duty leaves to love its task the beggar self forgets to ask with smile of trust and folded hands the passive soul in waiting stands to feel as flowers the sun and dew the one true life its own renew so to the calmly gathered thought the innermost of truth is taught the mystery dimly understood that love of god is love of good and chiefly its divinest trace in him of nazareth's holy face that to be saved is only this salvation from our selfishness from more than elemental fire the soul's unsanctified desire from sin itself and not the pain that warns us of its chaffing chain that worshippers deeper meaning lies in mercy and not sacrifice not proud humilities of sense and posturing of penitence but love's unforced obedience that book and church and day are given for man not god for earth not heaven the blessed means to holiest ends not masters but benignant friends that the dear christ dwells not afar the king of some remoter star listening at times with flattered ear to homage wrung from selfish fear but here amidst the poor and blind the bound and suffering of our kind in works we do in prayers we pray life of our life he lives to-day end of poem this recording is in the public domain the living temple by oliver wendell holmes from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Living Temple Nor in the world of light alone, Where God has built his blazing throne, Nor yet alone in earth below, With belted seas that come and go, And endless isles of sunlit green, Is all thy Maker's glory seen. Look in upon thy wondrous frame, Eternal wisdom still the same the smooth soft air with pulse-like waves flows murmuring through its hidden caves whose streams of brightening purple rush fired with a new and livelier blush while all their burden of decay the ebbing current steals away 
and red with nature's flame they start from the warm fountains of the heart no rest that throbbing slave may ask forever quivering o'er his task while far and wide a crimson jet leaps forth to fill the woven net which in unnumbered crossing tides the flow of burning life divides then kindling each decaying part creeps back to find the throbbing heart but warmed with that unchanging flame behold the outward moving frame its living marbles jointed strong with glistening band and silvery thong and linked to reason's guiding reins by myriad rings in trembling chains each graven with the threaded zone which claims it as the master's own see how yon beam of seeming white is braided out of seven-hued light yet in those lucid globes no ray by any chance shall break astray hark how the rolling surge of sound arches and spirals circling round wakes the hushed spirit through thine ear with music it is heaven to hear then mark the cloven sphere that holds all thought in its mysterious folds that feels sensation's faintest thrill and flashes forth the sovereign will think on the stormy world that dwells locked in its dim and clustering cells the lightning gleams of power it sheds along its hollow glassy threads o father grant thy love divine to make these mystic temples thine when wasting age and wearying strife have sapped the leaning walls of life when darkness gathers over all and the last tottering pillars fall take the poor dust thy mercy warms and mould it into heavenly forms end of poem this recording is in the public domain of him that together will serve two masters from the german of sebastian brandt and a translation of alexander barclay from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for LibriVox.org by craig franklin of him that together will serve two masters a fool he is and void of reason which with one hound tendeth to take two hairs in one instant and season right so is he that would undertake him to two lords a servant to make for whether that he be left or loath the one he shall displease or else both a fool also he is withouten doubt and in his purpose softly blinded sore which doth intend labour to go about to serve god and also his wretched store of worldly riches for as i said before he that together will two masters serve shall one displease and not his love deserve for be that which one hound will take also two hairs together in one instant for the most part doth the both two forego and if he one have hard it is and scant and that blind fool mad and ignorant that draweth three bolts at once in one bow at one mark shall shoot too high or too low he that his mind setteth god truly to serve and his saints this world setting at nought shall for reward everlasting joy deserve but in this world he that setteth his thought all men to please and in favour to be brought must lout and lurk flatter lord and lie and cloak in navvy's counsel though it false be wherefore i may prove by these examples plain that it is better more godly and pleasant to leave this mundane casualty and pain and to thy maker one god to be servant which while thou livest shall not let the want that thou desirest justly for thy service and then after give thee the joys of paradise end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Religion and Doctrine by John Hay From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4 The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter as the narrator Lian Yao as the rabbis And Craig Franklin as the beggar Religion and Doctrine He stood before the Sanhedrin The scowling rabbis gazed at him He recked not of their praise or blame there was no fear, there was no shame, for one upon whose dazzled eyes the whole world poured its vast surprise. The open heaven was far too near, his first day's light too sweet and clear to let him waste his new-gained ken on the hate-clouded face of men. But still they questioned, Who art thou? What hast thou been? What art thou now? Thou art not he who yesterday sat here and begged beside the way, for he was blind. And I am he, for I was blind, but now I see. He told the story o'er and o'er. It was his full heart's only lore. A prophet on the Sabbath day had touched his sightless eyes with clay and made him see who had been blind. Their words passed by him like the wind, which raves and howls, but cannot shock the hundred-fathom-rooted rock. Their threats and fury all went wide. They could not touch his Hebrew pride. Their sneers at Jesus and his band, nameless and homeless in the land, their boasts of Moses and his Lord, all could not change him by one word. I know not that this man may be, sinner or saint, but as for me, one thing I know, that I am he, who once was blind, and now I see. They were all doctors of renown, the great men of a famous town, with deep brows, wrinkled, broad, and wise, beneath their wide phylacteries. The wisdom of the East was theirs, and honour crowned their silver hairs. The man they jeered and laughed to scorn was unlearned poor and humbly born but he knew better far than they what came to him that sabbath day and what the christ had done for him he knew and not the sanhedrin end of poem this recording is in the public domain rabbi ben ezra by robert browning from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by jason in canada as the narrator craig franklin as the lord thomas peter as youth lian yao as the heart and sonya as age rabbi ben ezra grow old along with me the best is yet to be the last of life for which the first I was made. Our times are in his hand who saith, A whole I planned. Youth shows but half. Trust God. See all, nor be afraid. Not that, amassing flowers, youth sighed. Which rose make ours, which lily leave, and then as best recall? Not that, admiring stars, it yearned, nor jove nor mars mine be some figured flame which blends transcends them all not for such hopes and fears annulling youth's brief years do i remonstrate folly wide the mark rather i prize the doubt low kinds exist without finished in finite clods untroubled by a spark poor vaunt of life indeed where man but formed to feed on joy to solely seek and find and feast such feasting ended then as sure an end to men irks care the cropful bird frets doubt the maw-crammed beast rejoice we are allied to that which doth provide and not partake effect and not receive a spark disturbs our clod 
nearer we hold of god who gives than of his tribes that take i must believe then welcome each rebuff that turns earth's smoothness rough each sting that bids nor sit nor stand but go be our joys three parts pain strive and hold cheap the strain learn nor account the pang dare never grudge the throw for thence a paradox which comforts while it mocks shall life succeed in that it seems to fail what i aspired to be and was not comforts me a brute i might have been but would not sink in a scale what is he but a brute whose flesh hath soul to suit whose spirit works lest arms and legs want play to man propose this test thy body at its best how far can that project thy soul on its lone way yet gifts should prove their use i own the past profuse of power each side perfection every turn eyes ears took in their dole brain treasured up the whole should not the heart beat once how good to live and learn not once beat praise be thine i see the whole design i who saw power shall see love perfect too perfect i call thy plan thanks that i was a man maker remake complete i trust what thou shalt do for pleasant is this flesh our soul in its rose mesh pulled ever to the earth still yearns for rest we would some prize might hold to match those manifold possessions of the brute gain most as we did best let us not always say spite of this flesh to-day i strove made head gained ground upon the whole as the bird wings and sings let us cry all good things are ours nor soul helps flesh more now than flesh helps soul therefore i summon age to grant youth's heritage life's struggle having so far reached its term thence shall i pass approved a man for i removed from the developed brute a god though in the germ and i shall thereupon take rest ere i be gone once more on my adventure brave and new fearless and unperplexed when i wage battle next what weapons to select what armor to endue youth ended i shall try my gain or loss thereby be the fire ashes what survives is gold and i shall weigh the same give life its praise or blame young all lay in dispute i shall know being old for note when evening shuts a certain moment cuts the deed off calls the glory from the gray a whisper from the west shoots add this to the rest take it and try its worth here dies another day so still within this life though lifted o'er its strife let me discern compare pronounce at last this rage was right in the main that acquiescence vain the future i may face now i have proved the past for more is not reserved to man with soul just nerved to act to-morrow what he learns to-day here work enough to watch the master work and catch hints of the proper craft tricks of the tools true play as it was better youth should strive through acts uncouth toward making than repose on aught found made so better age exempt from strife should know than tempt further thou waitedst aged wait death nor be afraid enough now if the right and good and infinite be named here as thou callest thy hand thine own with knowledge absolute subject to no dispute from fools that crowded youth nor let thee feel alone be there for once and all 
severed great minds from small announced to each his station in the past was i the world arraigned were they my soul disdained right let age speak the truth and give us peace at last now who shall arbitrate ten men love what i hate shun what i follow slight what i receive ten who in ears and eyes match me we all surmise they this thing and i that whom shall my soul believe not on the vulgar mass called work must sentence pass things done that took the eye and had the price or which from level stand the low world laid its hand found straightway to its mind could value in a trice but all the world's coarse thumb and finger failed to plumb so passed in making up the main account all instincts immature all purposes unsure that weighed not as his work yet swelled the man's amount thoughts hardly to be packed into a narrow act fancies that broke through language and escaped all i could ever be all men ignored in me this i was worth to god whose wheel the picture shaped i note that potter's wheel that metaphor and feel why time spins fast why passive lies our clay thou to whom fools propound when the wine makes its round since life fleets all is change the past gone sees to-day fool all that is at all lasts ever past recall earth changes but thy soul and god stand sure what entered into thee that was is and shall be time's wheel runs back or stops potter and clay endure he fixed thee mid this dance of plastic circumstance this present thou forsooth wouldst fain arrest machinery just meant to give thy soul its bent try thee and turn thee forth sufficiently impressed what though the earlier grooves which ran the laughing loves around thy base no longer pause and press what thou about thy rim skull things in order grim grow out in graver mood obey the sterner stress look not thy down but up to uses of a cup the festal board lamps flash and trumpets peal the new wine's foaming flow the master's lips aglow thou heaven's consummate cup what needest thou with earth's wheel but i need now as then thee god who mouldest men and since not even while the world was worst did i to the wheel of life with shapes and colours rife bound dizzily mistake my end to slake thy thirst so take and use thy work amend what flaws may lurk what strain of the stuff what warpings past the aim my times be in thy hand perfect the cup as planned let age approve of youth and death complete the same end of poem this recording is in the public domain the religion of hudibras from hudibras part one by samuel butler from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by craig franklin the religion of hudibras he was of that stubborn crew of errant saints whom all men grant to be the true church militant such as do build their faith upon the holy text of pike and gun decide all controversies by infallible artillery and prove their doctrine orthodox by apostolic blows and knocks call fire and sword and desolation 
a godly thorough reformation which always must be carried on and still be doing never done as if religion were intended for nothing else but to be mended a sect whose cheap devotion lies in odd perverse antipathies in falling out with that or this and finding somewhat still amiss more peevish cross and splenetic than dog distract or monkey sick that with more care keep holiday the wrong than others the right way compound for sins they are inclined to by damning those they have no mind to still so perverse and opposite as if they worship god for spite the self-same thing they will abhor one way and long another for end of poem this recording is in the public domain the problem by ralph waldo emerson from the world's best poetry volume four the Higher Life, Part One. Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. The Problem I like a church. I like a cowl. I love a prophet of the soul. And on my heart, monastic aisles fall like sweet strains or pensive smiles. Yet not for all his faith can see would I that cowled churchman be. Why should the vest on him allure, Which I could not on me endure? Not from a vain or shallow thought His awful Jove young Phidias brought. Never from lips of cunning fell The thrilling Delphic oracle. Out from the heart of nature rolled The burdens of the Bible old. The litanies of nations came like the volcano's tongue aflame, up from the burning core below, the canticles of love and woe. The hand that rounded Peter's dome and groined the aisles of Christian Rome wrought in a sad sincerity. Himself from God he could not free. He builded better than he knew. The conscious stone to beauty grew knowest thou what wove yon woodbird's nest of leaves and feathers from her breast or how the fish outbuilt her shell painting with a morn each annual cell or how the sacred pine tree adds to her old leaves new myriads such and so grew these holy piles whilst love and terror laid the tiles earth proudly wears the parthenon the best gem upon her zone and morning opes with haste her lids to gaze upon the pyramids or england's abbeys bends the sky as on its friends with kindred eye for out of thought's interior sphere these wonders rose to upper air and nature gladly gave them place adopted them into her race and granted them an equal date with Andes and with Ararat. These temples grew as grows the grass. Art might obey, but not surpass. The passive master lent his hand to the vast soul that o'er him planned, and the same power that reared the shrine bestrode the tribes that knelt within. Ever the fiery Pentecost girds with one flame the countless host trances the heart through chanting choirs and through the priest the mind inspires the word unto the prophet spoken was writ on tables yet unbroken the word by seers or sibyls told in groves of oak or fanes of gold still floats upon the morning wind still whispers to the willing mind one accent of the Holy Ghost the heedless world hath never lost. I know what say the fathers wise. The book itself before me lies. Old Chrysostom, best Augustine, and he who blent both in his line, the younger golden lips or mines. Taylor, 
the Shakespeare of divines. His words are music in my ear. I see his cowled portrait dear. And yet, for all his faith could see, I would not the good bishop be. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On an Infant Which Died Before Baptism by Samuel Taylor Coleridge From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia as the narrator And Lian Yao as death On an Infant Which Died Before Baptism Be, rather than be called, a child of God Death whispered with a scenting nod, its head upon its mother's breast, the baby bowed without demur, of the kingdom of the blessed, possessor, not inheritor. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. What was his creed? By Anonymous. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, the Higher Life, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia as the narrator and Lian Yao as the questioner. What was his creed? Religion relates to life, and the life of religion is to do good. Swedenborg. He left a load of anthracite in front of a poor woman's door when the deep snow, frozen and white, wrapped street and square mountain and moor that was his deed he did it well what was his creed i cannot tell blessed in his basket and his store in sitting down and rising up when more he got he gave the more withholding not the crust and cup he took the lead in each good task what was his creed i did not ask his charity was like the snow, soft, white, and silent in its fall, not like the noisy winds that blow from shivering trees the leaves, a pall for flowers and weed drooping below. What was his creed? The poor may know. He had great faith in loaves of bread for hungry people, young and old. Hope he inspired, kind words he said to those he sheltered from the cold for we should feed as well as pray what was his creed i cannot say in words he did not put his trust his faith in words he never writ he loved to share his cup and crust with all mankind who needed it in time of need a friend was he what was his creed he told not me he put his trust in heaven, and he worked well with hand and head, and what he gave in charity sweetened his sleep and daily bread. Let us take heed, for life is brief. What was his creed? What his belief? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Philosopher Toad by Rebecca S. Nichols From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia The Philosopher Toad Down deep in the hollow, so damp and so cold, Where oaks are by ivy overgrown, The grey moss and lichen creep over the mould, Lying loose on a ponderous stone now within this huge stone like a king on his throne a toad has been sitting more years than is known and strange as it seems yet he constantly deems the world standing still while he's dreaming his dreams thus this wonderful toad in his cheerful abode in the innermost heart of that flinty old stone by the grey-haired moss and the lichen overgrown down deep in the hollow, from morning till night, dun shadows glide over the ground, where a watercourse once, as it sparkled with light, 
turned a ruined old mill wheel around long years have passed by since its bed became dry and the trees grow so close scarce a glimpse of the sky is seen in the hollow so dark and so damp where the glow-worm at noonday is trimming his lamp and hardly a sound from the thicket around where the rabbit and squirrel leap over the ground is heard by the toad in his spacious abode in the innermost heart of that ponderous stone by the grey-haired moss and the lichen overgrown down deep in that hollow the bees never come the shade is too black for a flower and jewel-winged birds with their musical hum never flash in the night of that bower but the cold-blooded snake in the edge of the brake lies amid the rank grass half asleep half awake and the ashen-white snail with the slime in its trail moves wearily on like a life's tedious tale yet disturbs not the toad in his spacious abode in the innermost heart of that flinty old stone by the grey-haired moss and the lichen overgrown down deep in a hollow some wise acres sit like a toad in his cell in the stone around them in daylight the blind owlets flit and their creeds are with ivy overgrown their stream may go dry and the wheels cease to ply and their glimpses be few of the sun and the sky still they hug to their breast every time-honoured guest and slumber and doze in inglorious rest for no progress they find in the wide sphere of mind and the world standing still with all of their kind contented to dwell deep down in the well or move like a snail in the crust of his shell or live like the toad in his narrow abode with their souls closely wedged in a thick wall of stone by the grey weeds of prejudice rankly overgrown end of poem this recording is in the public domain her creed by sarah knowles bolton from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by sonia as the narrator thomas peter as the chosen few and lian yao as her her creed she stood before a chosen few with modest air and eyes of blue a gentle creature in whose face were mingled tenderness and grace you wish to join our fold they said do you believe in all that's read from ritual and written creed essential to our human need a troubled look was in her eyes she answered as in vague surprise as though the sense to her were dim i only strive to follow him they knew her life how oft she stood sweet in her guileless maidenhood by dying bed in hovel lone whose sorrow she had made her own oft had her voice in prayer been heard sweet as the voice of singing bird her hand been open in distress her joy to brighten and to bless yet still she answered when they sought to know her inmost earnest thought with look as of the seraphim i only strive to follow him creeds change as ages come and go we see by faith but little know perchance the sense was not so dim to her who strove to follow him end of poem this recording is in the public domain my creed by alice carey from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by lian ya my creed i hold that christian grace abounds where charity is seen that when we climb to heaven tis on the rounds of love to men i hold all else named piety a selfish scheme a vain pretence where centre is not can there be circumference this i moreover hold 
and dare affirm where'er my rhyme may go whatever things be sweet or fair love makes them so whether it be the lullabies that charm to rest the nursling bird or the sweet confidence of sighs and blushes made without a word whether the dazzling and the flush of softly sumptuous garden bowers or by some cabin door a bush of ragged flowers tis not the wide phylactery nor stubborn fast nor stated prayers that make us saints we judge the tree by what it bears and when a man can live apart from works on theologic trust i know the blood about his heart is dry as dust End of home. This recording is in the public domain. Give Me Thy Heart by Adelaide Ann Proctor From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin as the narrator Sonia as her And Thomas Peter as the Lord Give Me Thy Heart with echoing steps the worshippers departed one by one the organ's pealing voice was stilled the vesper hymn was done the shadow fell from roof and arch dim was the incensed air one lamp alone with trembling ray told of the presence there in the dark church she knelt alone her tears were falling fast help lord she cried the shades of death upon my soul are cast have i not shunned the path of sin and chose the better part what voice came through the sacred air my child give me thy heart have i not laid before thy shrine my wealth o lord she cried have i kept aught of gems or gold to minister to pride have i not bade youth's joys retire and vain delights depart but sad and tender was the voice my child give me thy heart have i not lord gone day by day where thy poor children dwell and carried help and gold and food o lord thou knowst it well from many a house from many a soul my hand bids care depart more sad more tender was the voice my child give me thy heart have i not worn my strength away with fast and penance sore have i not watched and wept she cried did thy dear saints do more have i not gained thy grace o lord and won in heaven my part it echoed louder in her soul my child give me thy heart for i have loved thee with a love no mortal heart can show a love so deep my saints in heaven its depths can never know when pierced and wounded on the cross man's sin and doom were mine i loved thee with undying love immortal and divine i loved thee ere the skies were spread my soul bears all thy pains to gain thy love my sacred heart in earthly shrines remains vain are thy offerings vain thy sighs without one gift divine give it my child thy heart to me and it shall rest in mine in awe she listened as the shade passed from her soul away in low and trembling voice she cried lord help me to obey break thou the chains of earth o lord that bind and hold my heart let it be thine and thine alone let none with thee have part send down o lord thy sacred fire consume and cleanse the sin that lingers still within its depth let heavenly love begin that sacred flame thy saints have known kindle o lord in me 
thou above all the rest forever and all the rest in thee the blessing fell upon her soul her angel by her side knew that the hour of peace was come her soul was purified the shadows fell from roof and arch dim was the incensed air but peace went with her as she left the sacred presence there end of poem this recording is in the public domain oh may i join the choir invisible by marion evans lewis cross george eliot from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter oh may i join the choir invisible oh may i join the choir invisible of those immortal dead who live again in minds made better by their presence live in pulses stirred to generosity in deeds of daring rectitude in scorn of miserable aims that end with self in thoughts sublime that pierce the night like stars and with their mild persistence urge men's minds to vaster issues so to live is heaven to make undying music in the world breathing a beauteous order that controls with growing sway the growing life of man so we inherit that sweet purity for which we struggled failed and agonized with widening retrospect that bred despair rebellious flesh that would not be subdued a vicious parent shaming still its child poor anxious penitence is quick dissolved its discords quenched by meeting harmonies die in the large and charitable air and all our rarer better truer self that sobbed religiously in yearning song that watched to ease the burden of the world laboriously tracing what must be and what may yet be better saw within a worthier image for the sanctuary and shaped it forth before the multitude to finally human raising worship so to higher reverence more mixed with love that better self shall live till human time shall fold its eyelids and the human sky be gathered like a scroll within the tomb and read forever this is life to come which martyred men have made more glorious for us who strive to follow may i reach that purest heaven be to other souls the cup of strength in some great agony and kindle generous ardor feed pure love beget the smiles that have no cruelty be the sweet presence of a good diffused and in diffusion ever more intense so shall i join the choir invisible whose music is the gladness of the world end of poem this recording is in the public domain oh yet we trust that somehow good from in memoriam fifty three by alfred lord tennyson from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by craig franklin o oh, yet we trust that somehow good o oh, yet we trust that somehow good will be the final goal of ill to pangs of nature sins of will defects of doubt and taints of blood that nothing walks with aimless feet that not one life shall be destroyed or cast as rubbish to the void when god hath made the pile complete that not a worm is cloven in vain that not a moth with vain desire is shrivelled in a fruitless fire or but subserves another's gain behold we know not anything i can but trust that good shall fall at last far off at last to all and every winter change to spring so runs my dream but what am i 
an infant crying in the night, an infant crying for the light, and with no language but a cry. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Daybreaks by Charles Mackay From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin as The People And Thomas Peter as The Watcher on the Tower Daybreaks What dost thou see, lone watcher on the tower? Is the day breaking, comes the wished-for hour? Tell us the signs, and stretch abroad thy hand if the bright morning dawns upon the land the stars are clear above me scarcely one has dimmed its rays in reverence to the sun but i yet see on the horizon's verge some fair faint streaks as if the light would surge look forth again o watcher on the tower the people wake and languish for the hour long have they dwelt in darkness and they pine for the full daylight that they know must shine i see not well the moon is cloudy still there is a radiance on the distant hill even as i watch the glory seems to grow but the stars blink and the night breezes blow and is that all o watcher on the tower look forth again it must be near the hour Dost thou not see the snowy mountain copes, And the green woods beneath them on the slopes? A mist envelops them. I cannot trace their outline, But the day comes on apace. The clouds roll up in gold and amber flakes, And all the stars grow dim. The morning breaks. We thank thee, lonely watcher on the tower, but look again and tell us hour by hour all thou beholdest many of us die ere the day comes oh give them a reply i see the hilltops now and chanticleer crows his prophetic carol on mine ear i see the distant woods and fields of corn and ocean gleaming in the light of morn again again a watcher on the tower we thirst for daylight and we bide the hour patient but longing tell us shall it be a bright calm glorious daylight for the free i hope but cannot tell i hear a song vivid as day itself and clear and strong as of a lark young prophet of the noon pouring in sunlight his seraphic tune what doth he say o watcher on the tower is he a prophet does the dawning hour inspire his music is his chant sublime filled with the glories of the future time he prophesies his heart is full his lay tells of the brightness of a peaceful day a day not cloudless nor devoid of storm but sunny for the most and clear and warm we thank thee, watcher on the lonely tower, For all thou tellest, sings he of an hour When error shall decay, and truth grow strong, And light shall rule supreme, and conquer wrong. He sings of brotherhood, and joy, and peace, Of days when jealousies and hate shall cease, When war shall cease, and man's progressive mind Soar as unfettered as its God designed. Well done, thou watcher on the lonely tower. Is the day breaking? Dawns the happy hour? We pine to see it. Tell us yet again if the broad daylight breaks upon the plain. It breaks. It comes. The misty shadows fly. A rosy radiance gleams upon the sky. The mountain tops reflected calm and clear. The plain is yet in shade day is near end of poem this recording is in the public domain my home a thanksgiving to god for a house in the green parish of devonshire by robert herrick 
from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for LibriVox.org by craig franklin my home a thanksgiving to god for a house in the green parish of devonshire lord thou hast given me a cell wherein to dwell a little house whose humble roof is weatherproof under the spars of which i lie both soft and dry where thou my chamber for toward hast set a guard of harmless thoughts to watch and keep me while i sleep lo is my porch as is my fate both void of state and yet the threshold of my door is worn by the poor who hither come and freely get good words or meat like as my parlour so my hall and kitchen small a little buttery and therein a little bin which keeps my little loaf of bread unchipped unfled some sticks of thorn or briar make me a fire close by whose loving coals i sit and glow like it lord i confess too when i dine the pulse is thine and all those other bits that be they're placed by thee the warts the purslain and the mess of water cress which of thy kindness thou hast sent and my content makes those and my beloved beat more sweet tis thou that crownst my glittering hearth with guiltless mirth and gives me wassail bowls to drink spiced to the brink lord tis thy plenty drop in hand that soils my land and gives me for my bushel sown twice ten for one thou makes my teeming hen to lay her egg each day besides my healthful ewes to bear me twins each year and while the conduits of my kind run cream for wine all these and better thou dost send me to this end that i should render for my part a thankful heart which fired with incense i resign as wholly thine but the acceptance that must be my christ by thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain Peace by George Herbert From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia as the narrator Craig Franklin as the wind And Thomas Peter as the old man Peace Sweet peace, where dost thou dwell? I humbly crave, let me once know I sought thee in a secret cave and asked if peace were there a hollow wind did seem to answer no go seek elsewhere i did and going did a rainbow note surely thought i this is the lace of peace's coat i will search out the matter but while i looked the clouds immediately did break and scatter then went i to a garden and did spy a gallant flower the crown imperial sure said i peace at the root must dwell but when i digged i saw a worm devour what showed so well at length i met a reverend good old man whom when for peace i did demand he thus began there was a prince of old that salem dwelt who lived with good increase of flock and fold he sweetly lived yet sweetness did not save his life from foes but after death out of his grave there sprang twelve stocks of wheat which many wandering at got some of those to plant and set it prospered strangely and did soon disperse through all the earth for they that taste it do rehearse that virtue lies therein a secret virtue bringing peace and mirth by flight of sin take of this grain which in my garden grows and grows for you make bread of it and that repose and peace which everywhere with so much earnestness you do pursue 
is only there. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Peace by Francis Ridley Havergal from the World's Best Poetry, Volume Four, The Higher Life, Part One. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia as the narrator and Lian Yao as Jesus. Peace. Is this the peace of God? This strange, sweet calm? The weary day is at its zenith still. Yet this as if beside some cool, clear rill, through shadowy stillness rose an evening psalm, and all the noise of life were hushed away, and tranquil gladness reigned with gently soothing sway. It was not so just now. I turned aside with aching head and heart most sorely bowed around me cares and griefs in crushing crowd while inly rose the sense in swelling tide of weakness insufficiency and sin and fear and gloom and doubt in mighty flood rolled in that rushing flood i had no power to meet nor power to flee my present future past myself my sorrow and my sin i cast in utter helplessness at jesus feet then bent me to the storm if such his will he saw the winds and waves and whispered peace be still and there was calm o saviour i have proved that thou to help and save art really near how else this quiet rest from grief and fear and all distress the cross is not removed i must go forth to bear it as before but leaning on thine arm i dread its weight no more is it indeed thy peace i have not tried to analyze my faith dissect my trust or measure if belief be full and just and therefore claim thy peace but thou hast died i know that this is true for me and knowing it i come and cast my all on thee it is not that i feel less weak but thou wilt be my strength it is not that i see less sin but more of pardoning love with thee and all sufficient grace enough and now all fluttering thought is stilled i only rest and feel that thou art near and know that i am blessed end of poem this recording is in the public domain living waters by caroline s spencer from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by thomas peter living waters there are some hearts like wells green mossed and deep as ever summer saw and cool their water is yea cool and sweet but you must come to draw they hoard not, yet they rest in calm content, and not unsought will give. They can be quiet with their wealth unspent, so self-contained they live. And there are some like springs, that bubbling burst to follow dusty ways, and run with offered cup to quench his thirst where the tired traveller strays that never ask the meadows if they want what is their joy to give unasked their lives to other life they grant so self-bestowed they live and one is like the ocean deep and wide wherein all waters fall that girdles the broad earth and draws the tide feeding and bearing all that broods the mists, that sends the clouds abroad, that takes again to give. Even the great and loving heart of God, whereby all love doth live. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Devotion by Philip Massinger 
From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao. Devotion The immortal gods accept the meanest altars that are raised by pure devotion, and sometimes prefer an ounce of frankincense, honey, or milk before whole hecatombs or Sabaean gems offered in ostentation. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Seaside Well by Anonymous From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin The Seaside Well Waters flowed over mine head, then I said, I am cut off. Lamentations 3.54 one day I wandered where the salt sea tide backward had drawn its wave and found a spring as sweet as e'er hillside to wild flowers gave. Freshly it sparkled in the sun's bright look and mid its pebbles strayed as if it thought to join a happy brook in some green glade. But soon the heavy sea's resistless swell came rolling in once more, spreading its bitter o'er the clear sweet well and pebbled shore. Like a fair star thick buried in a cloud, or life in the grave's gloom, the well, enwrapped in a deep watery shroud, sunk to its tomb. As one who by the beach roams far and wide, remnant of wreck to save, Again I wandered when the salt sea tide withdrew its wave. And there, unchanged, no taint in all its sweet, no anger in its tone, still, as it thought some happy brook to meet, the spring flowed on. While waves of bitterness rolled o'er its head, its heart had folded deep within itself, and quiet fancies led, as in a sleep till when the ocean loosed his heavy chain and gave it back to-day calmly it turned to its own life again and gentle way happy i thought that which can draw its life deep from the nether springs safe neath the pressure tranquil mid the strife of surface things safe for the sources of the nether springs up in the far hills lie calm for the life its power and freshness brings down from the sky. So, should temptations threaten and should sin roll in its whelming flood, make strong the fountain of thy grace within, my soul, O God. If bitter scorn and looks once kind grown strange, with crushing chillness fall, from secret wells let sweetness rise, nor change my heart to gall. When sore thy hand doth press, and waves of thine afflict me like a sea, deep calling deep, infuse from source divine thy peace in me. And when death's tide, as with a brimful cup, over my soul doth pour, let hope survive, a well that springeth up for evermore. Above my head the waves may come and go, long brood the deluge dire, but life lies hidden in the depths below till waves retire, till death that reigns with overflowing flood at length withdraws its sway, and life rise sparkling in the sight of God, an endless day. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Altima Veritas by Washington Gladden From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4 the Higher Life, Part One, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Ultima Veritas. In the bitter waves of woe, beaten and tossed about by the sullen winds that blow from the desolate shores of doubt, when the anchors that faith had cast are dragging in the gale, I am quietly holding fast to the things that cannot fail. I know that right is right 
that it is not good to lie that love is better than spite and a neighbor than a spy i know that passion needs the leash of a sober mind i know that generous deeds some sure reward will find that the rulers must obey that the givers shall increase that duty lights the way for the beautiful feet of peace in the darkest night of the year when the stars have all gone out that courage is better than fear that faith is truer than doubt and fierce though the fiends may fight and long though the angels hide i know that truth and right have the universe on their side and that somewhere beyond the stars is a love that is better than fate when the night unlocks her bars i shall see him and i will wait end of poem this recording is in the public domain the end of the play by william makepeace thackeray from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by sonia the end of the play the play is done the curtain drops slow falling to the prompter spell a moment yet the actor stops and looks around to say farewell it is an irksome word and task and when he's laughed and said his say he shows as he removes the mask a face that's anything but gay one word ere yet the evening ends let's close it with a parting rhyme and pledge a hand to all young friends as flits the merry christmas time on life's wide scene you too have parts that fate ere long shall bid you play good night with honest gentle hearts a kindly greeting go all way good night i'd say the griefs the joys just hinted in this mimic page the triumphs and defeats of boys are but repeated in our age i'd say your woes were not less keen your hopes more vain than those of men your pangs or pleasures of fifteen at forty-five played over again i'd say we suffer and we strive not less nor more as men than boys with grizzled beards at forty-five as erst at twelve in corduroys and if in time of sacred youth we learned at home to love and pray pray heaven that early love and truth may never wholly pass away and in the world as in the school i'd say how fate may change and shift the price be sometimes with the fool the race not always to the swift the strong may yield the good may fall the great man be a vulgar clown the knave be lifted over all the kind cast pitilessly down who knows the inscrutable design blessed be he who took and gave why should your mother charles not mine be weeping at her darling's grave we bow to heaven that willed it so that darkly rules the fate of all that sends the respite or the blow that's free to give or to recall this crowns his feast with wine and wit who brought him to that mirth and state his betters see below him sit or hunger hopeless at the gate who bade the mud from divis wheel to spurn the rags of lazarus come brother in that dust we'll kneel confessing heaven that ruled it thus so shall each morn in life's advance dear hopes dear friends untimely killed shall grieve for many a forfeit chance and longing passion unfulfilled amen whatever fate be sent pray god the heart may kindly glow although the head with cares be bent and whitened with the winter snow come wealth or want come good or ill let young and old accept their part and bow before the awful will and bear it with an honest heart who misses or who wins the prize go lose or conquer as you can 
but if you fail or if you rise be each pray god a gentleman a gentleman or old or young bear kindly with my humble lays the sacred chorus first was sung upon the first of christmas days the shepherds heard it overhead the joyful angels raised it then glory to heaven on high it said and peace on earth to gentle men my song save this is little worth i lay the weary pen aside and wish you health and love and mirth as fits the solemn christmas tide as fits the holy christmas birth be this good friends our carol still be peace on earth be peace on earth to man of gentle will end of poem this recording is in the public domain the new year from in memoriam 105 by alfred lord tennyson from the world's best poetry volume 4 the higher life part 1 read for librivox.org by craig franklin the new year ring out wild bells to the wild sky the flying cloud the frosty light the year is dying in the night ring out wild bells and let him die ring out the old ring in the new ring happy bells across the snow the year is going let him go ring out the false ring in the true ring out the grief that saps the mind for those that here we see no more ring out the feud of rich and poor ring in redress to all mankind ring out a slowly dying cause and ancient forms of party strife ring in the nobler modes of life with sweeter manners purer laws ring out the want the care the sin the faithless coldness of the times ring out ring out my mournful rhymes but ring the fuller minstrel in ring out false pride in place and blood the civic slander and the spite ring in the love of truth and right ring in the common love of good ring out old shapes of foul disease ring out the narrowing lust of gold ring out the thousand wars of old ring in the thousand years of peace ring in the valiant man and free the larger heart the kindlier hand ring out the darkness of the land ring in the christ that is to be end of poem this recording is in the public domain life by jones very from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by lian yao life it is not life upon thy gifts to live but to grow fixed with deeper roots in thee and when the sun and showers their bounties give to send out thick-leaved limbs a fruitful tree whose green head meets the eye for many a mile whose spreading boughs a friendly shelter rear and full-faced fruits their blushing welcome smile as to its goodly shade our feet draw near who tastes its gifts shall never hunger more for tis the father spreads the pure repast who while we eat renews the ready store which at his bounteous board must ever last and as the more we to his children lend the more to us doth of his bounty send end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one